Muammar Gaddafi was a dictator who ruled the country of Libya from 1969 to 2011. Called the Mad Dog of the Middle East by US President Ronald Reagan, he wasn't loved much in the West. Nor was he that liked in the Middle East, who considered him too unstable. Many countries in Africa also had grievances with him. Internally, Gaddafi led an oppressive state with regular human rights violations and denial of freedoms. If a Libyan said anything bad about him, you should watch your back and trust no one, even the country you're staying in if you live outside of Libya. Yet, at the same time, Gaddafi was praised for his anti-imperialist policies and standing up to powers like the US, UK and France. Libya under him was one of the if not the richest and most developed countries in Africa. Libya after him has also not had a good time, making his reign look even better. So was Gaddafi a good dictator? Libya became an independent country on the 24th of December 1951 and was ruled by a monarch named King Idris, who was in my opinion a pretty poor ruler, banning political parties, ending the federal system of government which made him even more powerful and ruling very conservatively. Libya would provide bases to the US and UK for economic aid, making him unpopular among the Arab nationalists who wanted to remove western influence. In the first decade of his rule, Libya was poor and progress was slow. Large quantities of oil were discovered in 1959 that turned the country's fortune around, making it wealthy especially when you take into account its small population. Yet, despite becoming an oil exporter and having more financial resources, the average Libyan was not seeing much of the wealth. The cities had more investment, but the countryside was still lagging behind. There was also resentment at the fact that western oil companies were not offering Libya a greater share of the revenue. The government seemed to be overall ineffective and corrupt. Gaddafi was a member of the Free Officers Movement in the Libyan army. He was an Arab nationalist believing in a single powerful Arab state. He was against western influence in the Arab world and believed that Libya's oil wealth should be redistributed to a greater degree and invested to raise the people's standard of living. Inspired by Kamal Abdul Nasser's own Free Officers Movement, which came to power in 1952, he led a coup on the 1st of September 1969, nice. while the king was on a trip to Turkey. The takeover went smoothly and Gaddafi became the head of the new government named the Revolutionary Command Council and one year after his takeover, the military bases were removed. One of the first priorities for the government was negotiating a larger share of the oil revenue with the oil companies, in which they were successful, increasing the resources available to Libya to carry out development. Later nationalizations would give the government even more control. The money would be used to fund social programs like building more housing to combat homelessness, capping rents, as well as expanding healthcare and education. Libya's literacy rate also went up significantly. The rural areas, which were still underdeveloped, saw investment that improved the quality of life. As time went on, Gaddafi's socialist ideals began to influence Libya's economy more. He encouraged worker councils in businesses, increased nationalizations, expanded the state by providing people with government jobs, and established more state-owned companies. Gaddafi would also provide services like water and electricity for free. The agricultural sector was also heavily subsidized, making food cheap. These services do seem great, but as time went on, problems emerged. The free education and healthcare while an improvement from before was still low in quality despite Libya making a ton of money from oil sales. Gaddafi would instead prioritize buying weapons and building up the military. His socialist policies eventually crippled the private sector as the state dominated the economy. Plenty of the government jobs provided to people were unproductive with people doing nothing but sitting around and wasting time. Libya became completely dependent on oil and could not develop any other industry to diversify its economy. Electricity, while free, was not available 24-7 with blackouts being common. While yes, Gaddafi's economic policies did improve people's lives, more credit should go to the oil than Gaddafi himself. Without it, I don't think Libya would be much developed. It can even be argued that Gaddafi underperformed. Libya was one of the richest countries with a very small population. It could have looked like the Gulf states. Instead, what we got was pretty mediocre. Still, life did improve. But what did Libyans pay for this improved quality of life? Well, how about no political freedoms whatsoever? unless you support Gaddafi. Gaddafi continued the ban on political parties and ruled like an autocrat. He stopped a coup attempt in 1975, allowing him to abolish the RCC, giving him more power. Protests were brutally crushed and after finishing his magnum opus called the Green Book, he announced the establishment of the socialist people's Libyan Arab Jamahriya. Freedom of speech and protest were there. In fact, the average Libyan had plenty of rights that were fairly progressive. It's just that if you exercise those rights,
one of the things for which Gaddafi should be praised was increasing opportunities for women. Given how conservative Libya was, Gaddafi's expansion of women's rights should be applauded. Now they were just as oppressed as the men. This is probably what Gaddafi was most well known for. Like I said before, he believed in pan-Arabism and tried multiple times to unite different countries. All of these proposals failed for one reason or another. Another aspect of pan-Arabism at the time was opposition to Israel. And boy did Gaddafi hate them. Libya even went to war with Egypt for four days because Gaddafi opposed Egypt signing a peace deal with Israel. Libya went to war with Chad too in the 1980s over a land dispute and did make decent progress. But with Chad being Chad, Libyan forces were eventually kicked out. The US and French might have helped as well. Realizing that his army might not be strong enough to challenge his enemies, he turned to various militant groups to cause instability and spread fear. Ideology didn't really matter as long as your cause was anti-imperialist in nature. Just look at the number of groups he funded. This money wasn't coming from his own pocket, this was Libya's money he was wasting. Because he funded so many groups, some of them actually had positive results, like Nelson Mandela's ANC, at a time when many considered them radicals and extremists. But just because some groups turned out okay, doesn't mean all this funding becomes justified. Gaddafi would also use terror attacks to try to intimidate the West, but that only got Libya sanctioned and isolated. In 1986, the Libel discotheque was bombed, killing three and injuring 229 people. The nightclub was frequented by US servicemen and Libya was considered responsible. The result was US conducting airstrikes which almost killed Gaddafi. After the strikes, Gaddafi added grade to the country's name and continued terror activities. The 90s were more of the same for Libya, making money from oil and supporting various groups. He did change his pan-Arab beliefs and converted to a pan-African, arguing for a unified African currency, no borders and even a United States of Africa later on. The 2000s however saw change. After 9-11, Libya tried to improve its relations with the West. Economic reforms were attempted, like privatizations, however they slowed down after protests. Political prisoners were released as long as they agreed to stay out of politics. The price of oil was high, increasing government revenue. Corruption however was still rampant. But things seemed to be moving forward even if it was slow. The Arab Spring started in Tunisia when people, tired of corruption and economic stagnation, toppled the Tunisian dictator. The movement spread to Libya and turned into the Libyan civil war. Long story short, the rebels, with the help from NATO, won and Gaddafi was killed. So Gaddafi was pretty bad. He isolated his country and oppressed his people. Yes, Libyans lived better lives than before his coup. It became personal with me. I'm assuring you that he's not. Me being compared to him. I, I took offense to that. I was a little bit upset that I didn't get the MVP that year and they gave it to Charles Barkley. But with that said, okay, fine, you can have that. I'm gonna get this. I can't believe people actually praise him as if he is some misunderstood hero. He could have made his country an economic power with all the oil money, but instead turned it into a pariah. 